So this one's going to have three topics. We're going to talk about, about Prince Harry's Netflix deal, Prince William and Kate, and is he shutting out his brother on purpose, maliciously, and then uh, the Earth Shot Prizes. Three topics. That's what we're going to talk about. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much just for watching. <laughs> Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So, yeah, there was a lot to cover in this. I think we need to know... So Prince Harry's Netflix deal, you know, there's, they've got two trailers released so far. One that features uh, Megan talking and the other one features Harry talking. And uh, were those trailers released by Netflix and uh, the Sussexes really didn't have any control over that? Because, I mean, that is certainly a possibility. Were they released with the Sussexes' uh, knowledge and approval? And, um, and specifically, were they released either by Netflix or the Sussexes to specifically take advantage of William and Kate's Earthshot uh, visit to Boston? That, I'd like to know about that. Number two, Prince William and Kate, but specifically William, is he shutting out his own brother, Prince Harry? Is he deliberately just cutting him off? No more conversation with him. It'll be years before they um, have any meaningful um, interaction. Is that what's going to happen? I'd like to know that. Maybe we can put that to bed uh, permanently until there's a frost uh, thawing. And there will be. I know that there will be. But is he shutting him out now for for an indefinite period of time? And then on the Earthshot Prizes, will these five awards significantly uh, advance the core goal of saving the Earth? Will these five awards this year make a significant difference. That's what I want to know. Here we are. So this is the Cary Yale Visconti uh, deck and they're fascinating. They're interesting cards. This, um, this pack is from around the 15th century. So we're dealing with some old uh, imagery here and uh, there were 67 original cards in this pack and they're difficult to use because they're so darn big let me uh, shuffle them this way uh, plus 19 modern renditions of a suggested missing card so there's 86 in here instead of uh, 78 and um, they were painted for the Duke Filippo Visconti before 1447 Amazing. I love these cards. You know, I've got a, you can kind of see them in the background here. Uh, there's a line of cards and there's a line of cards right there. So that's the library I have of just tarot cards. And then I've got a bunch of books. I think they are right there that speak to the tarot or maybe there. I have to uh, go turn around and look at them, which I don't want to do. But uh, so these are, are fascinating cards. Um, and, and hopefully they'll give us some, some good deep interpretation but before we do too much let's have a moment of meditation There we go. You know, I do, uh, as I say before, I do a longer uh, meditation before I even start um, filming the videos. Um, and then this one is just a little extra and maybe something to encourage you to squeeze in. I mean, you don't have to spend, you know, an hour meditating to make a difference. You can just take a few minutes, find a little calm in yourself. And, um, and these few seconds that we do here is even useful, I think. So the first question up then is going to be Prince Harry's Netflix deal. So the release of those trailers, awfully suspicious. You know, was that Harry? Was that Netflix? Was it Harry and 
Netflix, okay? And when I say Harry, I include Megan in that. I mean, they're, they are clearly making these decisions together. This is his history that they're uh, cashing in on, obviously, and, um, and so it has to be a decision by both of them. So I won't say uh, right now uh, whether they are um, cashing in on that history uh, for, in a bad way. Um, I honestly, personally, this is what I personally think. I feel like he is, in his mind, has serious concerns about kind of a back channel uh, in the courtiers of that family that uh, play to the press and don't leave uh, anything up to the uh, royals uh, of significance. That's how I feel. But uh, let's uh, flip these around one more time to another uh, shuffle. And I think I'm going to do uh, three cards, but one at a time. And I'm going to ask the question, was the release uh, Netflix idea? Was the release Harry's idea? Was the release a combination of Harry and Netflix? So three. So first one, right now, was that release solely Netflix. Harry and Meghan didn't have any choice. It had to be released when Netflix wanted it to be released. Let's see what the card says. Okay, so this is the male knight of wands. What's significant about this card? Okay, um, uh, it's the male knight. In this deck we have a female knight who would be less powerful than the male knight. I'm sorry, these are antiquated cards and that's the way it would be. Um, and then the wand, wands are actions, plans, forward movement. The male knight of wands, um, I asked if this was Netflix, and this, for me, is telling me this is Harry fighting for his actions. So I've kind of negated the other two questions, but um, I'm, I'll, I'll go ahead and pull again on Harry, and I'll pull again on a collaboration. But for me, when I asked if this was Netflix uh, alone that made this decision, this pointed me directly to Harry fighting for his actions. That's what I see. So, put that back over here, just to get it back in the deck, and I, I won't pull from that side now. The next question, uh, well, let me give it a shuffle. The next question then is, is this Harry alone saying, now's the time, William's coming, let's release it now, because that, that would have been what we would have looked for. Okay, is it Harry alone? Okay, so this is the King of Cups, still giving us that kind of royal flavor, uh, Cups being emotions, Harry being the king of his family at this point, and uh, so this is reaffirming that this is Harry. This is Harry. And then the last one is, was it actually a collaboration? The first draw told us it wasn't even Netflix, it was Harry. The second one uh, reaffirmed that it's Harry's passion. And the third one, was it a collaboration, a suggestion? And Harry says, yes, let's do that. Was this a collaboration? So, uh, we'll see. Was it a collaboration? Wow. Three of Swords, which is a broken heart. This was all Harry. This was all Harry. So now, let's do six cards to see how this is going to work out. The Prince Harry's Netflix deal. Was this a clever move? Six cards. One. Two, three, four, five, and six. Was this a clever move by Harry? There we go. Okay, first card, this will be the signifier card. Was this a clever move? by Harry, this whole Netflix trailer situation. Two, four, six, eight. Eight of Pentacles is uh, practicing your value, getting it down just right. He is becoming um, 
adept at knowing how and when to get the spotlight. Challenge to that. This is an ace of pentacles. The challenge to practicing his craft, practicing his, his uh, stage craft really, uh, is uh, looking for that great big payoff, that great big ace of pentacles, that big uh, chunk of value. The base of this as to um, how this will work out for him is the one, two, three, four, five of swords. And uh, five of swords is an abuse of power, quite frankly. So is he taking advantage of his power? I would say he's deliberately taking advantage of uh, that. It's a purposeful uh, move in that direction. Past of this, two, four, five of pentacles is having been left out in the cold. Absolutely right. So yeah, the past of this reading for Harry and this Netflix uh, trailer release and this whole buildup is he was left out in the cold. The sky of this, what is the best he could hope for with all of this is this is the Queen of Cups. So this is garnering the, the highest hope. You can see the cup right here, the huge cup of emotion, this Queen um, very interesting. And she kind of has her hand on the head of this little fellow right here. Who you would take to be a prince. I'm to cough, so I'm about to cut this video. So yeah, trying to get the, and please forgive my watery eyes. I just had a little coughing fit. I've kind of cut this out of the video. But yeah, this Queen of Cups is telling us that he's shooting for a real regal amount of compassion for, for what he's trying to accomplish here with this Netflix situation. And then the final outcome, I guess as to whether it'll be successful, is, oh wow, one, two, three, four, five. This is the 10 of swords. And the 10 of swords is the absolute end of a cycle. Not good, to tell you the truth. I would say this is going to put this issue to bed. That's what that's telling me about this. So the question was, this uh, stagecraft that looks like it was Harry's uh, major, um, you know, intention. Let me put it on the fan over here because I'm a little warm. Is, um, yeah. It's him practicing his stage craft. He's looking for the most amount of value he can squeeze out of it. It's um, based right here on an abuse of power. And I think he understands that he's abusing that power and trying to use it to his best advantage. This Five of Pentacles in the past here is saying, yeah, I was left out in the cold. That's what brought all this on. And in the sky, this Queen of Cups is saying, I'm looking for a regal amount of compassion for what's you're going to be revealed in these uh, this series of videos and in the end it says look and this will put it to bed interesting it kind of means to me that this will put the issue to bed once these netflix videos are out that um maybe they'll be moving on to something else off of this topic perhaps so now we're going to talk about Prince William and Kate, but specifically William, is he shutting out his own brother, Prince Harry? Is he purposefully looking at Harry like he's a problem that has to be nipped in the bud? That's a shame. Is William shutting Harry out? Is William shutting Henry out and we'll do one card for that okay this is the Hierophant this is the government this is the ruler this is this is the authority by which a thing is is governed so William is taking the authority to say no I'm gonna be the king I'm gonna draw the cards I'm gonna play the game and this is this is intentional on his part he is shutting his brother out now let's do six cards to see how that's going to work. Is that going to be successful? 
is he going to be able to put enough of a spin on this to achieve the goal that he may have. We don't know what it is. Uh, he certainly wants to strengthen or um, if not strengthen the monarchy to um, keep it strong. Is this going to be useful for William, what he's doing? I'm not saying it's bad. I just want to know if it's going to work. Six cards. Okay, there's the six. And now we'll put these away. Is this strategy going to be a winning one? for William. Signifier card. Okay, so we come here with the female page of swords. Swords are truth, justice, rules, law. Female page, remember there's a male page of swords in this deck also who, also who would be more significant than the female page. And the pages in general are the weakest of the royal court. So this is a very weak effect on William's goal whatever it might be. So this idea of shutting out his brother is a very weak effect. And what's it challenged by? It's challenged by the King of Pentacles. And what is the King of Pentacles? Pentacles are value. And the King of Pentacles is really looking for all, protecting all the value that he has, okay? So the challenge to this uh, weak page of uh, truth, justice, rules, and law, this weak suggestion, uh, the challenge of that is come up with a kingly amount of value for that idea. The basis of this whole thing with this female page of Pentacles is that we started out in some way with, again, female page of swords, female page of Pentacles. This is uh, consistent. This is staying in that same level of importance. Um, so this female page of Pentacles being the base of this is telling us that, look, there wasn't a, a huge amount of value in this fight to begin with. In the past of this then with this uh, male page of wands. So the male page of wands, I think this is representing Harry. I think this Harry with his plan. So the past of this with this weak plan of action. And in the sky of this with this, oh what is this? Is this the, um, um, the high priestess and, or the empress? Yeah. This is the Empress, as a matter of fact. And so, yeah, she's seen as a nurturing, um, a caring um, effect. And so the goal of this is to come up with some sort of a, a nurturing um, e um, result uh, for the monarchy. Okay. And then the final outcome as to whether William's uh, strategy will be uh, successful is a broken heart. Or is this the Three of Wands? Ah, no, this is the Three of Wands. And so it's not a broken heart, but what it is, is that this is the beginning of a long-term plan. Will William's strategy be useful? Well, it starts out with the female page of swords. So this is a very weak message, very weak offering of truth, justice, rules, and law. And it's uh, challenged uh, it's challenged by this king of pentacles. In other words, it's challenged by coming up to a lot of value. This weak offering of, of protecting your truth, justice, rules, and law is challenged by can it even come up to that kingly amount of value? Maybe not. And in the base of this whole thing with this female page of pentacles, this female page of value, the basis of this is this was always a weak way to go. This didn't have a lot of value. It was worth bringing it up, but it didn't have a, a legs, really. And in the past of this, with this um, male page of wands, is the um, is Harry's um, fight. Okay, that's what started this. The sky of this reading, what you're going to shoot for, is an empress-like um, nurturing effect on the monarchy, but the end result is going to be that this is going to require long-term planning, and these short-term um, jabs aren't going to be um, 
significant towards William's goal of healing this uh, monarch rift. Now let's switch over to the Earthshot prizes. So five were given. I think there were over a million dollars each. I'm going to say a million two or a million five, something like that, towards the goals, which is not that much when we're talking about saving the planet. But it's not insignificant. So these Earthshot prizes, these five awards, will they significantly advance the core goal of saving the Earth's environment? And I should have mentioned that this was a question uh, Linda Joe had asked about the Earthshot. Now, if she wanted me to predict who was going to win those Earthshot prizes, I took it up uh, for a video too late because those awards had already come out. So, but uh, I thought we can focus and see if, in fact, those awards will make a difference, if they're going to help, if they're going to move things along in a significant way. A million and something each may not seem like much, but, you know, five, almost six million in total, maybe it is. So let's do six cards on that whole question. The Earthshot Prizes, will these five awards significantly advance uh, that goal? Two, three, four, five. Linda Joe, it may not be the exact question that you wanted answered. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Do I need another one, two, three, four, five? Let's take it right off the top, six. Uh, but we'll see if it's going to help, if it's going to push things in the right direction in a significant way. Thank you. All right. Five cards, six cards rather. And the signifier for that, ah, two, four, six, eight, nine. This is the nine of pentacles. This is a lot of value. Okay, this is really a wash in value. So if this was the only card I chose for this to say, yes, this is a big deal and it's making a difference. But what's the challenge to it? The challenge to it with this um, uh, six of the major arcana are, are lovers. And so the challenge, and you can see right here, you've got Cupid up in the sky, getting ready to shoot his Cupid's arrow down and strike these lovers in the heart. So the challenge to this is getting people significantly engaged. And the base of this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of cups is, yeah, wanting, looking back to the past and wanting things to be the way they were, clean. <laughs> Let's put this under here. The uh, past of this then, with this four of pentacles is really trying to hold on. We're trying to hold on to the resources that the earth has and not ruin it. So that's perfect uh, for the past of that. In the sky of this, what we can aim for, we'll look at this, it's five, six, seven, eight, and this is the justice card. So this is finding that balance, that that balance that we can live with, because as humans, we have to continue to take advantage of these resources, but we have to find the perfect balance to do so. So justice is the perfect card to signify uh, what has to be achieved uh, in that. Maybe I'll put this one uh, down here like this. And then the final outcome for uh, whether they will make a significant difference is the Six of Pentacles. You know, Pentacles are value, they're worth. Uh, six of Pentacles is not an insignificant amount of value, but I want to get a better a definition for that uh, right off the bat. And so for the Six of Pentacles, it says giving, receiving, sharing, gifts, balance, reward. So the end of this, the likely outcome, is that, yeah, it's going to be significant. Let's read it all again. Will these uh, prizes awarded this year make a big difference? And look, we get the Nine of Pentacles, a huge amount, a huge amount of value. Challenged by, right here, uh, finding the uh, lover, finding the perfect pairing to get this thing done. The basis of this, with this uh, Six, Seven, Eight of Cups, is looking back to the past, trying to roll things back to the way they were when they were good. And uh, in, uh, in the basis of the whole thing is what the uh, goal is. And in the past of this, with the Four Pentacles, is holding on to what we've got. Okay, not making it worse, but holding on to the value that we have. And then finding the justice and finding that perfect balance. And the likely outcome is that yes, 
there will be a significant amount of value that's distributed uh, towards uh, that goal. So I like that. Well, I thought that was a lively bunch of cards. Those are difficult cards to use, by the way. So I, I try to be careful when I'm using them because they have it's an expanded deck and they have some um, archaic kind of meaning sometimes. So I hope uh, you enjoyed that. And let me know what you'd like me to read on and I'll squeeze that in. Thanks. Hey, I'm going to show you the card. So this is the Carryvale Visconti 15th Century Tarachi deck. And they're beautiful cards. They're big cards. The uh, container they come in is really um, amazing. And there's a nice little rundown on what the cards are about here because they are, in fact, uh, kind of special. Now, uh, like I said, this is sturdy. The guidebook inside is really good. I mean, it gives you some very good um, uh, history and then, of course, uh, ideas for divination of the cards. And uh, it is in full color also. Uh, and this is by uh, Theory DePaulis and Stuart R. Kaplan, who is uh, from of tarot fame, Stuart R. Kaplan. Now, so good book. The box, like I said, is great. Cards are big. And the deal with the cards is this. There's extra cards in this deck. You can see that the back of them is pretty distinct and I like noticing the back because from this you can tell whether your cards are going to be upright or inverted. Okay, so right now you can see that with this these two blotches down at the bottom of the of the of the card that you know this is going to be upright. And of course if those two blotches were at the top of the card, then you'd know well that's the hangman. So it's not a good uh, example because he looks uh, wrong. Then you'll know that it's inverted. So Blotches at the top, uh, inverted, blotches at the bottom, the way they should be. Now, the extra cards, because there are 86 cards here, and uh, this is from the 15th century. It's also known as the, the Visconti di Madroni uh, Tarot. So let me count these off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And here's why I, I put these cards out ahead of time. The extra cards are these. Um, in the Major Arcana, or the uh, uh, Trump cards, the number two of the uh, Trump uh, deck is usually the Pope S or the High Priestess. But in this deck, it's called Charity. And this is how it looks like. So this is Charity. So it's the number two of the Major Arcana. It's usually the Pope or the High Priestess, or the Pope S, rather, or the High Priestess. And in this one, it's called Charity. Now, the number five in this deck, which is typically, in other decks, the Pope or the Hierophant. Now, in this deck, it's Faith. Okay, and so this is Faith, the number five card. And then the number 17 card, which in other tarot decks is the star card. In this deck, it's Hope. Okay, so you can tell it's a star a little bit if you kind of remember to look up here when you come across this card and it's Hope. Then, in the major, or rather in the uh, pip cards or the, the suit cards, there's, uh, of course, you have swords, wands, pentacles, and cups. But in this deck, there are, and you know, you have knights and you have pages. But in this deck, you have male and female knights and male and female pages. So in this uh, deck of swords, you have the male of knights and the male, uh, the female of knights. And then you have the uh, male of pages and then the female of pages. Okay, so those are some of the differences in this deck. And so you've got 86 cards to deal with instead of the regular um, the cards that you would otherwise have. Now, to look at them, they're amazing. I've got my cheat sheet up here to tell me what I'm supposed to say about these cards. Um, these, as you can see, they're huge. And some of them are, you know, not so intuitive. You can tell from looking at them what they are, but others of them, are not very intuitive, and so you really kind of need to know your uh, your system before you start using the cards. And I like to lay them out like this, just so that you get a good idea of what the different cards look like. These cards are actually, let's see, I'm going to tell you what we've got here. They're part of a collection at Yale University at Connecticut's uh, Manuscript uh, Library, and these were painted for the Duke uh, Filippo Visconti before 1447. And so that's all the pertinent information. Interesting cards, kind of big. They can be cumbersome to use, but it's something different. And I, this is kind of the last uh, purchase I've made uh, for cards. And because um, I didn't know, I just like to keep uh, some unusual cards in my scheme of things. Coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again. So, ciao for now. <laughs>